Welcome, everyone. It is Monday, April 24th. We're speaking with our good friend and colleague, Louis Ronet. Many of you will recognize his name. He's someone who writes frequently at Mises.org. He also spent a couple of summers here in Auburn with us as a summer fellow. Uh, Louis is currently a graduate student finishing his master's in economics at Sciences Po University in Paris. And in the fall, he'll be moving back to the United States to pursue a PhD in economics. So all that said, Louis, welcome. It's great to see you again. Thank you for having me. Well, first and foremost, what are your initial thoughts about the election yesterday? Do you think Le Pen underperformed or overperformed relative to expectations? Okay, I, I think that the main uh, surprise is not that much that uh, she's close from Macron, but rather that uh, actually Fillon performed pretty well with all the justice justice issues he had is mm -hmm. at 20%. You have a difference less than two points between him and Le Pen. Mm -hmm. So it's actually quite impressive. But I didn't expect him to, to, to be in the second turn of the election because you had too much uh, um, problems with his personality. Well, the justice issues right. he had. Yeah. Right. And where do you think most of his voters will go in the second round election? I think uh, it can be divided in three parts. Like one third is uh, abstention. They won't vote. Okay. So one other third will be Macron. And the last third will be uh, Le Pen. Really? I think that, yeah. So a bit of a split. Well, yeah. that being said, what do you think Le Pen's chances are in the second round? Do you think she can win? I think you don't have many. Uh, maybe some people are too already too optimistic about Macron and because they say almost declare him as a president, you know, a little bit like in the US uh, with Clinton. And maybe you remember Newsweek uh, a cover about President Clinton and some people seem to act the same. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, but I don't think she has many chances to, to be uh, okay. elected. Okay. Well, when we're looking at Macron, he, he's a very unknown quantity in the United States. Uh, in reading about him, clearly the Beltway favors him in this election, including Beltway libertarians, I might add. Um, now, it, it appears that he's truly an independent in that he ran without an established party in the election. Independents in the United States have had a very hard time uh, winning without the Democratic or Republican machines behind them. How do you think he was able to do this as an independent? Well, in France, it's the same. Like uh, independent, or we call them centrists. They uh, they always had a hard time to be elected. Um, but I think it's a very peculiar situation we have now. Yeah. We have a very unpopular president. Um, in the polls, he <laughs> He had only 4% of uh, favorable opinions. So it's a very, very historically low. Um, and, and yeah, also uh, people are seeking for other ways because they, they are disaffected with politics in general. So the fact that this guy never really even received a mandate from anyone mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. um, worked a, a little bit in the private sector, although not much, um, well, probably made a difference. Well, if you consider uh, being a Rothschild's banker, private sector. Exactly, yeah. I guess he so, did. So, so what he did is like public relation. Yeah. He, the, the guy just uh, did a school that we call uh, LENA, um, which is a, a national school of administration, where all the high-ranked uh, public officials uh, go to, to, to be high-ranked public officials. And uh, afterwards, um, he was on the Atali Commission, which was a commission to, to seek for solutions for the French economy in 2007. Um, and uh, in 2008, he um, met François Hollande and actually kept pretty close to him. Right. So he, he, he is a little bit more uh, free market friendly than François Hollande, the current president. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it's nuances, and not right. really. Any... Right. A little more free market than Olan. That's a ringing endorsement from you, Louis. Exactly. Yeah. yeah I, well, I, I, I'm not endorsing him or anything. I just say that. Also, 
how it got known is actually by talking to the right wing people. Yeah. Um, what he did is to make some very controversial claims. Um, to give you an example, controversial claims about um, the legal uh, time uh, working time limit, or about one day he said, uh, if you want to buy a suit, the best way is to work. So that's very controversial things for socialist people, right? And uh, people in the socialist party, and he was a minister in a socialist government. So um, he represented a more moderate or more um, free market uh, branch of the Socialist Party, which doesn't mean much, but uh, actually played a huge role because uh, right wing um, columnists and uh, intellectuals said, oh, this guy is pretty good. Uh, Maybe there is something here. And after during the campaign, he became more and more leftist and um, gave up his more free market ideas, just giving handies to everybody. And uh, so, so now he pretty much has um, no program. We uh, discovered this program very late. Mm-hmm. It's a, a 17 pages long program, which is very short compared to the other candidates. And um, actually, it's not detailed at all. Um, he says, oh, I will uh, deregulate uh, some stuff, but, um, well, we don't know what. Um, I will reduce some spending, but it's not specified. But uh, you have some increase mm-hmm. in spending, too. Um, on a general level, what is also worrying um, is that actually some libertarians uh, defend this guy because he wants to reestablish a draft. I don't think that any libertarian can uh, defend somebody who wants that. Sure. Right. And that's maybe one of the biggest points in libertarianism. The draft is something really bad. It's the equivalent or almost the equivalent of slavery. Right. Mm. Well, let's forget what he says <laughs> for a moment. What, what What do you think is in his heart? Do you think he's closer? Uh, to a true believer, Bernie Sanders socialist, or do you think he's closer to a Hillary Clinton neoliberal globalist? Oh, no, Hillary Clinton type. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, The Bernie Sanders type will be Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who lost in the first uh, turn of the election, but actually did a very, very good score and also improved a lot. So he is at uh, 19.5%. And he did an amazing campaign. I, I would say that he did, the, on a technical level, he did the best campaign uh, this year, especially right. on the social medias. Right. Well, you know, Americans who think that France is more socialist than the United States, if Bernie Sanders had been on some sort of open primary ticket here, he would have gotten e- easily 19%, probably much more than that. So we're, we're, I think, just as far along as France in terms of our ideological errors here. Um, Louis, well, that, but you have other candidates also that were yes. here, and they were even more yes. radical than Bernie Sanders, and uh, openly Marxist and revolutionary uh, candidates. I don't think those right. can exist <laughs> in right. America. So, the, so there were something like 11 total candidates on the ballot? I think 10, yeah. 10. Okay. In in California, for instance, in the United States, we have what's called a jungle primary, where anyone can enter the primary, and the two highest vote-getters... Uh, proceed to the general election, regardless of whether they're both Democrats, for example. Um, in, in the French second round system, could you have two people from the same party in the second round, or is that not how it works? No, 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 no. Okay. Doesn't, you only, uh, a does not happen. A particular party gets one representative in the earlier round. Think there could be two people who have similar ideas, right? but not right. two people from the same party. Right. Well, what okay. whatever they did is uh, to so the two major parties before the election, so the Socialist Party on the one end mm-hmm. who just collapsed completely, uh, it's at six percent in like, this election, so it completely almost vanished. And the Republicans, they said, well, we are going to do primaries before the election because it's a way for us to uh, ensure we monopolize public debate. But it didn't work very well since, well, none of them are actually selected in the second turn of the election. So, Right. Well, 
Last time we spoke, we talked a lot about uh, Marine Le Pen and this uh, distinction that exists in America as it does in France between urban versus rural voters. This city versus country divide was a big issue in the Trump campaign. And since we last spoke, there's been yet another article on this. And this time it was by Christopher Caldwell in the City Journal called The French Coming Apart. And he talks about the French version of of what we call in the U.S. a rust belt. Uh, He termed it La France Périphérique. Peripherique, periphery. Mm. Mm. Um, I'm probably pronouncing that badly. Uh, h- how much do you think that played a part yesterday in in uh, Le Pen having it, you know, a decent showing? Is this really a a Paris versus everybody else uh, election? Well, there is something like this, yes. In the sense that um, Macron in Paris received something like thirty four percent of the votes, mm-hmm. uh, so it was really overrepresented. Um, what what happens is that you have two uh, geographical areas that um, really vote for uh, Le Pen. So you have the south of France, where I I live actually. So that's the traditional right um, wing region. So they vote for either the Republicans or um, the the National Front Mm -hmm. massively. And they are more traditional. They are more like the Bible Belt uh, in the U.S. And you have uh, the north of France near Picardy and near Belgium. That's um, the equivalent of the Rust Belt in America. And those are former socialist uh, voters that are switching to Marine Le Pen. And so you have this divide among the, the, the National Front because they don't have the same ideas. But they coexist. Well, you know, you wrote an article actually a few months back, which we recently uh, republished, called "Is Marine Le Pen the French Donald Trump?" And I was wondering if you could just just highlight for for us. You you draw out some pretty significant differences between Le Pen as a candidate and as a movement, and and Donald Trump and his phenomena in the U.S. So talk about the differences, why they're not such a good analogy to each other. Well, so I wrote this one month ago because. Donald Trump seemed not to seek for any uh, endorsement from the establishment during the campaign. And um, definitely that's not the strategy uh, Marine Le Pen sought, in the sense that she also tried to attract people more or less from the establishment. Her right arm, for example, Mm -hmm. Florian Philippot, is also from the ENA, the school I, I told about that Macron went to. Um, so she she opened the party to the young people to she she really tried to to make it more mainstream in a way, more uh, diabolical, uh, as we say in France. And um, but now, obviously, now that uh, Trump is elected, actually he is getting along pretty well with the establishment. So, well, that's something. But I would say that um, Marine Le Pen's father wasn't at all in this strategy. Right. She he really didn't like political correctness, etc. Yeah. It, it was, a, this one was really a fascist type uh, right-wing um, politician, but really he didn't want to make any compromises. Mm-hmm. Well, so it was a different thing. And, and you also point out that Marine Le Pen's a career politician, uh, which yeah. I think is a big distinction with Trump. I mean, she's already always been around the national front and she's always been in politics and that's how she's made her living. Um, mm. to... And it's a big difference with Macron, actually, because Macron, again, is not a career politician, but she is. Right. He's also young-ish, about 10 years younger than her. Um, he's got this strange situation where he married a much older woman who was his mm. his uh, high school teacher. Um, yeah. You know, I think this is going to win him the feminist vote. Well, I I don't know. I think uh, compared to the to America, we don't care as much about family life. Yeah, it doesn't play as much of a role in French politics at, as it does here. So right, right. Well, I'll. You know, I'll leave you with one last question on Le Pen. Obviously, you're you're a, a great libertarian. You're somebody who's read Mises and Rothbard and Hayek, um, and and presumably also read all all the uh, 
the the French classical liberals and libertarians. You know, what's the response to a disaffected uh, French person who says, I don't like the changes uh, happening in France. I don't like the, the secularization of French. I don't like the small towns losing their identity. I don't like mass amounts of Islamic, uh, of Muslim immigrants, uh, you know, occupying whole whole neighborhoods in places like Paris. I mean, what's, from a libertarian perspective, we we certainly can understand the appeal of Marine Le Pen, what, what? How would you respond to to someone asking, you know, bringing up these kinds of problems in France? Well, I'm I'm not a politician, so probably it's not to me to answer to this question. There would be two good politicians to do it <laughs> if that exists, but uh, but maybe just doing things that actually work. Um, I think that one of the big problem with uh, the current uh, situation is that. Policies were made that just don't work. Holland drastically mm -hmm. increased uh, taxation and the size of the state. So did Sarkozy. And now we are a, in a big financial trouble. And actually, the only candidate during the first turn that talked about this is Fillon. But uh, I, I don't say that he was a libertarian because he wasn't. And he was a prime minister for five years. So why would we trust him, but he was the only one to talk about public debt, mm -hmm. uh, the, the excessive size of the state, etc. Marine Le Pen wants to increase the size of the state. Um, and Macron is just more, well, we are just going to leave uh, things as is and just, you know, do a European uh, government uh, with a European budget and uh, we are going to fight uh, uh, fiscal competition. So that was one of actually of the uh, worst trait of his program. Well, you, you bring up an interesting point, which is that there are huge structural problems in France, just like the United States, which maybe can't be solved politically at this point. There's at least not through voting because people will always vote for things uh, that aren't necessarily possible. So thanks for your time, Louis. It's great seeing you, Thank great you. talking to you. And uh, perhaps we'll talk to you again in a couple of weeks if, if uh, Marine Le Pen surprises everyone.